In this video, we are going to take this twig shape that we've been working on and we're going to instance that here into our dirt ground and then we're going to splatter that shape across the ground surface. So first thing I'm going to do is just come over here to my Explorer. I'm going to just left click and drag and drop this twig graph right here into the dirt ground to create an instance of it. So you'll notice that now that we've done that, we have our own custom node here, which is like a twig shape maker. Here you can see that with the node selected, the instance parameters, we have the parameters we exposed. So we have this scale value. And then here in the 2D view, we have our transform manipulator. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a shape splatter node. So here we'll add our shape splatter. We need to uh, input a background height. So let's just take the result of this previous shape splatter. We're going to take its height output and plug this here into the background height. Then for the pattern, I'm going to create uh, uh, pattern input number two. So we're going to have two different patterns here. And let's take the output or height output from the this node and we'll plug that into pattern one. Then I'm going to hit control D to duplicate it. And now you'll notice here, this is where we can come in and we can start to change the shape here interactively. So I'm just going to start by adjusting here my transform manipulator so I can just change the overall shape of this. I'm also going to come over here to my scale and adjust this. And so you can see, just like that, I can quickly create a variation here for this twig shape. And this goes back to the entire reason why we took this, all the work we did here to create this shape, and we made this into our own subgraph. And that's because we were able to create this custom node out of it. Uh, like I said previously, you can imagine that, you know, with all the nodes that we used to create this shape, let's say we had all those nodes here, uh, then I'd have to duplicate all those nodes to create a second pattern, and it can get pretty messy uh, very quick. So by taking this content here into a subgraph, we were able to clean this up and it's a much better way to work uh, in terms of organization as well as graph optimization. All right, so let's take the result of this second twig and plug that here into our pattern. And we'll double click our shape splatter and we can start to see the result here in our 2D view. Uh, we need to pipe this to our base material, so let's just reestablish this connection line. So I'm gonna hit down shift and just redistribute this as we've been doing in previous videos. Okay, so now we're starting to see uh, something happening here in the 3D view. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come over to my X and Y mount and I'm gonna start maybe with, uh, let's do 25 by 25. And I'm gonna come over here to my scale and I'm gonna increase the scale value. So now we're starting to see something like this. Also gonna adjust my scale random here. Uh, so if we zoom in, uh, you can see that, well, we're starting to get this shape, but you know, the height scale is pretty high. It's just extruding this straight up. So first thing I want to do, uh, is just scroll down here to my height. And I do want to make sure that this twig conforms to the background. So we're going to adjust this slider value here. Uh, so by doing that, uh, we'll start to have this conform to that underlying background data that's coming into the shape splatter. Let's also smooth uh, that conformed background. All right, and then we also are gonna come in here and adjust this height scale. So I'm gonna lower this value quite a bit. Okay, so now we're getting something more like this. And we're gonna probably, we may come back to this, but for now, let's come over here to our position and let's just uh, randomly position this here as well as increase some uh, random rotation here. So now we're getting something like this. And I think what I'll probably do is, uh, let's see, let's scroll up here to our size and let's increase our size. Let's take this maybe to 2.5, see what we get. All right, so we might try, you know, something like this here. And now I'm going to just jump back to my height, uh, lower my height scale yet again. So here, let's just take this down to uh, 0.35. Uh, I could also uh, introduce a little bit of height offset random here. So I'm just going to increase that uh, just a bit. And so now, uh, you know, we're starting to get uh, these twigs here just scattering all over the surface. Uh, I think what I'll also do is come down here towards my masking and just mask randomize some of that. So we just mask some of those shapes out. And here you can see again, because we're using that conform to background and the order in which we are kind of stacking or leveling these shape splatters, you can see that uh, you know we have our pebble small, we have our large, and then on top of that is where we're going to add 
here are twigs. And so again, because everything's conforming to that background, we're able to insert these shapes at the appropriate height levels based on the order in which we have everything laid out here. Okay, and also, like I said, the twig shape itself is also following along with that background information, which also includes these dirt mounds that we've been working on. Okay, so uh, we have it uh, like this so far. Uh, again, it's just a matter of just playing with some of these settings. I may go back to my scale here and set this to maybe a value of three. Just scale it up a little bit more. Okay, let's try something like this for now. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just set this up or basically split this up this into uh, kind of a, a smaller range of these twigs and then a larger set. So here I'm going to just uh, hit Control D just to duplicate uh, this shape splatter. Now I wanna take the result of the shape splatter for these small level twigs and just plug those and just reroute that into the new background height of this new shape splatter. And uh, then I'm just going to redistribute my connections here to my base material. So we'll do this. So now we have this shape splatter ready. Uh, what I'm gonna do here, let's just grab another uh, instance of our twig. And I'm just gonna make a slight change here. So we'll do something like that. And let's feed this here into our pattern one. And let's control D, let's duplicate this. And again, I'm gonna make just another change. Let's see what I can come up with. Just a different shape is the idea here. And we'll adjust our scale. Okay, so just as long as we just vary that up a bit. Now let's plug this here into our pattern two. Okay, so now, like I said, we're, we're just gonna have two different kind of levels of this. This is going to be a smaller twig shape, uh, but it's also going to have more of an amount. This one here is gonna represent larger twigs. So we want to uh, maybe take this to 15 by 15, so a smaller amount. And then I am also gonna scroll down here and further mask this. Now, because we started to add, you know, since we're adjusting our overall amount, like I said, that's also gonna have an effect on our height scale. So what I think I'm gonna do here is take the height scale down a little bit more on this. And let's take this to a value of 0.2. Okay, so now when we take a look at our ground, you can see that uh, we have a lot of these twigs just kind of scattering. It really looks like some roots or like vine work that's just covering or spreading all over our ground here. We really start to get a pretty nice kind of randomized feel to this, again, because of the way we're breaking this up into levels, uh, meaning that, you know, we have a smaller set and a larger set. Now it's just, again, a matter of tweaking to find, uh, you know, the look that I'm really going for. Maybe this is uh, a lot. So what I might want to do is go back here to this, this first shape splatter and just increase my masking amount here. So we'll maybe try something like this and then we'll come over to uh, our second level here and maybe adjust the um, masking amount even more, get something like that. And so here's the result that we have from all the work that we've been doing in these videos here within this chapter two. So here, let's just move these nodes over. Uh, we're gonna grab these guys here and we'll just put this in place. And I'm gonna frame up these nodes. So we'll come in and add a frame here. And this is going to be, uh, this will be our twigs. And uh, within this frame, uh, let's just go ahead and just label these as well. So this first set here we know is going to be uh, uh, small and we'll just colorize that. And let's grab this second set here and we'll add a frame for this and this will be large. So same setup that we did for the pebbles. So we get something like this. Okay, so at this stage, uh, we have completed our height map. We have created a pretty complex setup here. We have our basic dirt ground. Uh, we have some dirt mounds that we've mixed in. So we've started here with just our basic shape. Uh, then we added some secondary kind of smaller shapes to make up the overall dirt ground. Then we use shape splatter here to create some kind of medium uh, dirt mounds. Then we did another level variation of that to add some smaller kind of dirt shapes. From there, we started to add some pebbles and we broke this off into two levels where we had, uh, we started to add in some small pebbles, uh, then some large pebbles. 
Then we went and created our own custom node uh, for creating twig shapes. And now we're starting to scatter those across the ground to get uh, more of this kind of root or vine pattern that we have here. We scattered some small twigs uh, and then we blended that here with some large twigs, which because of the order that we have this in, the large twigs are always gonna be on top of the small and so on. Also, these large twigs are going to be on top of everything that we have thus far. And now that we have this very complex detailed height map, we can start working on creating our roughness map and our albedo.